Cause it's the final countdown. No, actually we're like dead in the middle of the controls. We're not even close. But hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder with On Call Compliance Solutions and I'm back with another compliance tip of the week. And if you're binge watching me, you got a lot more binging to do, baby. Let's get ready to purge. All right, this week we're talking about CMMC control IA.L2-3.5.10, store and transmit only cryptographically protected passwords. So hey, if you're a defense contractor who's feeling overwhelmed, tired and alone, trying to understand all this CMMC, DFARS, and NIST SP800-171 compliance stuff on top of an already colossal workload, well, I have great news for you. You found your home here at On-Call Compliance Solutions, where we can help you transform into your company's on-call compliance hero. Let's jump into it. CMMC control IA.L2-3.5.10, store and transmit only cryptographically protected passwords. Now, on the surface, you might think to yourself, well, of course, passwords would be encrypted. But here's the thing, Windows isn't the only place CUI is stored. Many companies create their own systems and processes in order to serve their own unique needs. In some cases, this requires them to create custom programs which often do not follow security best practices. There's a hint, all right, if you have an in-house design program, it's probably not all that secure and you should probably have somebody actually do a security review of it. In any event, no matter how you are working with passwords, you must make sure they are stored and transmitted in an encrypted way, even if you've had the software developed yourself. Guys, I'm just gonna tell you, I've had a ton of applications over a 20 plus year career developed, and I'm just gonna tell you that unless you specifically ask your programmer to encrypt the passwords, they're gonna put the, that password field, it's gonna be a clear text field in SQL, all right? Nine times out of 10, I'm not even kidding. It's just gonna be sitting there for anybody to be able to scan uh, you know, or packet sniff. All right, let's look more into what the assessors are looking for on this one. Two big controls, all right? Uh, determine if passwords are cryptographically protected in storage. Uh, again, here's an example. I'll just kind of pull out the easy button here. Active Directory stores passwords required for system access. Active Directory utilizes DES for backwards compatibility. And then with CNG, bcrypt, AES 256-bit encryption, which is FIPS 140-2 compliant. That's the official answer I would probably give. All right, determine if passwords are cryptographically protected in transit. Uh, again, talking about the Windows system, right? The NT hash is protected by two layers of encryption in transit. Uh, and then of course the final third assessment point, we would say, hey, look, passwords are actually never really sent in transit. There's a tokenized system. Uh, and again, we just wanna make sure that passwords are not sent uh, remotely there. So. Uh, and on call, we work with defense contractors just like you to come up with awesome answers like that, okay? Uh, if you've had this DFARS, NIST, ITAR, and CMMC compliance stuff dropped into your lap like a seagull on a sunny day, the good news is we teach you how to level up and be a proper on call compliance hero for your company. We help you eliminate gaps, gray areas, and getting this solved, all while showing you how to leverage compliance as your secret weapon to land more defense work with higher profit margins. Now, that's what becoming an on call compliance hero can do for you. If you're looking for more help getting compliant, our compliance experts are always on call for you. Visit cmmccompliancesecrets.com or check out the bio below for links to get help right now. If you love the content we're putting out here for you, help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button, or even better, smash the subscribe button to subscribe button to hit the subscribe button. Sorry, I have to say it three times because I can tell you haven't subscribed yet. So I'm just, just hit the subscribe button, just do it. It makes me, it makes us happy. Like it, it actually, like literally, I don't know if you know this or not, quick, quick window into our marketing department here at On Call. When there is a subscribe button that gets pressed, there's actually a gong in the corner. And we all hit the gong. It's actually a race to the gong. It's kind of a funny thing. Okay, we do that. It's like, that's our win. Because in marketing, we don't do sales. We just, we hit the gong because we got new subscribers or we hit a new prospect or, you know, whatever. You know how it goes. Anyway, until next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there. Make us hit the gong by subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.